All right, we're going to go ahead and talk about the intermediate value theorem. It, as you'll see in a second, is kind of straightforward. You know, you see a bunch of wordiness. This is the, fish, the uh, formal definition over here. But um, it's fairly straightforward, as we'll see in just a second here. So um, basically the idea is if you have some graph, some function, okay, and, you know, it starts, we're looking at it only on a certain interval, it starts at A, and this, I put a point right here, so it starts at some value A, it's associated, then it has a Y value, F of A, and it finishes off in this interval that we're looking at, at B, at F of B. Well, the idea is that, you know, essentially if you look at any number, we'll call it K, that lies in between F of A and F of B, okay, so let's just say well, K is right here. So K is referring to some Y value in between F of A and F of B. And this could be flip-flopped. I mean, the, the Y value could start above K in the, at A and, and below K or something, too. And if your function is continuous, if you start here and you finish here, it's going to have to cross through K at least one time. If it's not continuous, well, we could do something, for instance, like this. Okay. And um, clearly we could draw something that's not continuous. I put a hole in the graph there when it got to the y value of k. And it still was a function. It still started a, it still started b, and it didn't pass through k. But again, that was not continuous. So for the intermediate value theorem to work, um, you, you have to have f be your function. It has to be a continuous function, OK? And you know this value k, we're saying, has to lie in between f of a and f of b. So if those two things happen, then you know for sure that at some point in, in this interval from a to b, that it's going to cross uh, this y value of k. So for instance, you know, it could do it a couple times, like let's look at right here. So there it did it one, two, three times. It could just do it one time if you just do a straight line right through there, or it could even be curved and it could only cross once. These places where it crosses are referred to as values of c. I'll call these like C1, C2, and C3, for instance. Um, and when I'm talking about C, I'm referring to this definition as I'll talk about right now. So, okay, it says, if F is a continuous, uh, I'm sorry, if F is continuous on the closed interval from A to B, so these brackets make it closed, meaning it includes A and B, and K is any real number in between F of A and F of B, so those are the two requirements that have to happen for the intermediate value theorem to hold true, then there exists at least one value c, so in this case you can see there was a few of them, in this interval between a and b, such that f of c is equal to k. So which means is, at all of these values c, if you plug those into the function, the y value of those would be equal to k. So again, it's a fancy way of saying that if you start below something, you finish above it, you got to cross through all the numbers in between. And that only works with continuous functions. For instance, an example real quick of where it wouldn't apply in a kind of a real-life situation. If you think of a basketball player, maybe their season uh, point total. Well, let's say at the beginning of the season, of course, they'd start out with zero points. And let's say they end up with 100 points. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that at some time they had 50 points just because they started at zero and went to 100 because, you know, they can get it two points or three points at a time, so you can just cross right over that 50. But if you think of it with like driving, for instance, if you start out going zero miles per hour and you end up, you know, at some point going 60 miles per hour, well, you know at some point in between the time you started at zero and you got to 60 miles per hour, you were going 30 miles per hour. And it could have been where you went, maybe you speeded up above 30, slowed down, came back up again, and might have gone 30 a couple times. But you had to at least gone 30 once. You can't jump over it. So the basketball one kind of is like a real world, like not continuous type function because it just steps up um, by you know either one, two, or three uh, points each time. And the um, the driving is one where it's continuous. You know you can't somehow magically jump over a certain mile per hour as you're driving. Uh, one application of this uh, with with, uh, with math stuff would be to find a zero of something. So, for instance, um, I'll look at a very simple example. But um, if you have some function such as, oh, f of x equals, let's just say something real simple like x cubed, for instance. f of x equals x cubed, okay? And you wanted to show that there is a zero on that function, and we'll get specific. We'll say there's a zero on that function between 
negative 1, x equals negative 1, and x equals positive 1. So what you're going to do, you have first say, is this function continuous? Well, it's just a you know, cubic, it's a polynomial, it is continuous, okay? So then what you'd have to do, again, you're trying to say that there's a 0 in between x equals negative 1 and 1. Okay, so 0 in interval from negative 1 to 1. So we're looking to prove there is a 0 in this interval. So our negative 1 becomes like a and our 1 becomes like b. And what we could do here is we could then put negative 1 in for x. And again, this is very simple. Clearly, there's a 0 at 0. But I'm just showing you the idea here. Um, so for instance, if I plug negative 1 in here for x at the beginning of this interval, I get, when I plug that in, negative 1. When I plug 1 in here, I get f of 1 is equal to 1. Okay. So from that, I can determine that I'm trying to prove there's a 0, meaning the function equals 0, or the y value is 0 in that interval. Well, look, at negative 1, it starts out at a y value of negative 1. At positive 1, it's now at a y value of 1, so it had to have crossed through a y value of 0. Um, and just to make sure we're clear, if we look at that graphically, so at negative 1, at x equals negative 1, we found the y value was negative 1. At x equals 1, we found that the y value was positive 1. So we have a continuous function starting from here, getting to here. At some point, it's got to cross through y equals 0. Okay, it has to. And we know in this case it would be at 0. Um, but, you know, this intermediate value theorem doesn't necessarily tell you where it crosses through. You know, this might be helpful if you have a very complex function, and especially maybe before there were calculators to try and, you know, find where a 0 might be proof that a zero might be at a certain place on a graph somewhere. So that's an example there. When you look at the AP test, um, just kind of real quick here, they, they will I mean, occasionally have references to this within a conceptual problem. It might be a multiple choice type thing or something with a, a chart where they might give you, you know, it could be doing some like real world application, but they might give you certain values of um, some function, uh, f of x or g of x or whatever, and you know maybe at x equals zero the function is equal to seven, at x equals two the function is you know, twelve, and at x equals five the function is you know, negative two or something like that. And you could, f from this, you know, they could ask you, well, you know, does this, you know, can you prove or that this function would be you know, equal to zero somewhere in the interval from, you know, x equals zero to x equals five. And if you look here, I can notice and say, hey, at x equals two, I see that the y value is 12. At x equals five, I see the y value is negative two. So assuming this function is continuous, which it would have to be in order to, you know, fit into this intermediate value theorem, if it is continuous, you know that somewhere in the interval from two to five, this function is going to be equal to zero. And they could say, you know, if it equals do you know if this function is going to equal 9 on this interval? I say, oh, it, I see at x equals 0, the function is 7. At x equals 2, the function is 12. So somewhere between 0 and 2, to get from 7 to 12, it's going to have to pass through 9 if f is a continuous function. So that right there is just kind of a basic breakdown of intermediate value theorem.